Imagine you were sat in your garden, enjoying a beautiful summer's afternoon. And then all of a sudden, a nuke came out of the sky and blew everything up. Well, that'd be the end of it, wouldn't it? Now imagine that scenario, and you had an underground nuke in a bunker. Well, then you'd be living in a post-apocalyptic world. If you've ever sat there and thought to yourself, what might this world look like? What might I be battling for? What are some of the challenges that I might face? Now, rather than live in this extreme nightmare, you could just play Metro Exodus, a game that allows you to explore the post-apocalyptic world through the eyes of Artyom, the player who you play as, trying to prove the existence of life outside of this nuclear world, surviving the harsh climate, as well as trying to protect yourself against people who you may have considered friends. Now, whilst talking about this game, I don't want to spoil too much, as the game heavily relies on the story in which it portrays, so spoiling too much of it will completely ruin the game for anyone who would like to buy it. However, what I am going to say is I'm going to say some tips and bits which I've found whilst playing the game, what I've found to be good about it, what I've found to be not so good about it, and also looking at the perspective of people who have played the game for a lot longer than I have. I would initially say one of the largest positive points for me is how amazing this game looks. It really throws you into a cinematic experience of what this world would be like. Having the ability to have a very minimalistic hood around you, meaning that there's not loads of things all along the screen, it allows you to really immerse yourself into the amazing environment of which Metro Exodus provides. An environment which seamlessly fits with the story in which is trying to be portrayed. An environment that keeps you on your toes, just as you'd have to be in a post-apocalyptic world. To make that environment slightly easy to be able to navigate around, you can choose a variety of different weapons, of which you can craft ammo for. You can also craft medical supplies and you can also have armor, all of which helps you get around this world that little bit easier. On the topic of gunplay, I thought it was quite satisfying as well as being quite simple to use. The gunplay reminded me of that of Far Cry games. I think that would be the closest similarity that I could pull. Very simple to use, very easy to be able to aim with, nothing, nothing too extreme, as you would imagine in a first person shooter game. Stealth is encouraged, but not necessary. With the addition of med kits and the fact that you can take cover in lots of different places means that you can play the game stealthy, which makes the game fun. However, it's not completely necessary. I went absolutely guns to the wall in one bit, which was supposed to be stealthy, and I survived it and I managed to get through, which you could argue can be both a positive because you can get through the area and progress on your journey without the necessarily having to be stealthy. However, when I talk about this game promoting the cinema cinematic experience of it surviving in a world like this, it doesn't really provide that. I'd imagine this is done to make the game easier and more fun and enjoyable for a standard player who just goes around the game and wants to quickly run through the different bits just to explore the different areas of the story. However, for someone who really wants to immerse themselves within the environment, the lack of ability of needing to be stealthy at certain points means that it kind of breaks you out that cinematic experience which I've been constantly talking about. There's a variety of characters that you might meet whilst completing your story, some of which you can trust, some of which you can't. I'll let you figure that out as you play along. In terms of the story, I haven't fully completed the game, nor have I ever played a Metro game before. However, I really enjoyed the story. I felt that it kept you on your toes, it switched up the story every so often, and then you would find new characters along the way, which would once again really spice up your journey as you're playing through the story. With new challenges and little curveballs thrown in there just to keep you on your toes. Here are some reviews of the game from what people thought to the game, both positive and negative of people who played the game for much longer than I have. I felt the last review was quite interesting as it's from the perspective of someone who's played the other Metro game. Feel free to pause the video to be able to read these different reviews. The last review which I'm showcasing here really goes into some good detail about the things and the issues which they had with the game, which for me, although they are complaining about the games, they also say quite a few positive things as well. Overall then, would I purchase Metro Exodus again? Well. Yes, in short. I thought the game had quite a nice story, I felt the cinematics were good, and I felt for the price that it was offering at, I thought it was a very fair and reasonable price for the type of game which it was. The game offers a roller coaster of emotions and tension and really does provide a insight into what it might be like to survive a post-apocalyptic world. Metro currently retails at a little over £26, which I think is a more than a fair price for what the game offers. If you've played Metro at all, leave a comment down below what did you think to the game. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.